Okay. Uh, there have been some emails moving back and forth on the blogs concerning SAFER. That is the firefighter grants that the city council authorized uh, staff to submit uh, approximately probably five or six months ago uh, out there. Last week, uh, the fire department came to us and there were uh, two wrinkles in the grant uh, that created some concern. Uh, the first one is called maintenance of effort. And that means that uh, you can't uh, reduce your staff. You've got to maintain the current staffing level uh, in order to qualify and to accept that grant. So uh, uh, because we're early in the budgeting process, uh, when uh, the fire department asked that question of me, I could not state un unequivocally that uh, we could maintain effort uh, position until the council takes formal position on that. The second one, though, is, uh, is related to it also, is that it's a three-year grant, fully funded, but uh, at the end of that three-year period, the city council would have to maintain all of the firefighters on the payroll for at least one additional year uh, before that could be terminated. And as I told the chief at that time, I could not guarantee uh, what a future council you know, would want to do or whether or not they would have the financial resources to guarantee that particular situation. It's much in the same way that we were talking about uh, at the end of the period when the when federal dollars are going to be over out of the stimulus package, uh, what will occur at that point in time. We're running that with the COPS grants too. <clears throat> That's correct. Uh, so from the standpoint, when, uh, okay, if the council you know, desires for us to proceed forward, knowing that those are the two items that you have to commit to at the very beginning, uh, those were the curveballs, as I think Chris Weert uh, said, that were thrown at him, uh, thrown at him uh, then we can, con we can continue. But a number of cities have actually returned their dollars once they got them because they said, we cannot guarantee you that three years from now that we will have the resources in order to carry that, uh, those personnel forward. And uh, we're not willing to commit uh, that uh, we're not going to have to do something in the maintenance of effort area. Okay, I did. Okay, now, because uh, so, barring no uh, discussion from council, I guess. Wait, this time, I don't think it, we I have, think you're, we're not far enough into the budget for right. me to be comfortable. Uh, well, I well, can't Well, I was going to say, initially, um, excuse me, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, I couldn't do, I wouldn't uh, g agree to it because we can't guarantee what's going to happen in the next two or three years. Well, when I first heard about it, too, I thought, oh, gee, well, maybe that would help us eliminate some of the overtime costs, you know, that have been... Uh, really out, out, the, out, out the roof right now. But uh, again, with those two curveballs, as you said, and uh, even uh, uh, Chris Weir's comments that people are turning back the money, there's just no way you could support uh, not knowing what the future uh, budgets are going to be. So I'm I, I, uh, uh, with you, Ken. As far as I'm concerned, let's look at what would have happened if this had, if we'd done this four years ago. Where would we be today? And, and how would we be managing to, uh, to accomplish that? with today's dollars, or lack of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the final item that I wanted to you know, talk with the council about and kind of brief you, uh, Kelly did an article that appeared uh, earlier in the, uh, I think it was last week, uh, related to the overtime in fire. Uh, we've talked about it in kind of broad general terms. Uh, uh, we had looked at options such as uh, going, you know, whether you could meet it under, under a demand model, uh, reduce the overtime on demand model. And a demand model is to base, basically look at your staffing patterns and determine, okay, do I need a full contingency during these periods of the hours or whatever. And it was... And, and uh, then we looked at some other models, and what essentially that uh, the model that was presented uh, and developed uh, really related to trying to keep as many people on the, uh, on staff as we could before we started having to call in overtime. 
and then you would be able to get down to a level of 12 under the particular model uh, that was uh, that was developed by fire rescue, which then would mean that the outlying stations would be responding to the interior of the city, and the interior station, the one at station 73, would now not be staffed. Now that, uh, in looking at, uh, from kind of talking with Tom, would that occur often? The answer is no, uh, but it is an option of trying to maintain a service level and at the same time control the overtime expenses uh, of the city, of uh, the fire department. Um, again, that is not the preferred option, and we made it very clear that wasn't the preferred option. The preferred option is, you know, kind of maintaining three at each one of our stations, uh, then looking at other types of uh, service delivery.